man. Like I know that, yeah. you know, it's been it's been problematic to say the least to get this started, but nice to actually have you here with us here in the channel. Um, I think we've been uh, trying to kind of set up this for how long? It's been like at least a couple of months. Uh, yeah, I feel like we started talking about it like December and then it's just, December? yeah, and then just schedule changes and fi we're finally doing it though. So almost finally, a year, it. but it's yeah. here. Yeah, I'll persist. But anyways, it's been it's a pleasure, uh, Mark. So Mark, um, uh, big introduction. Um, he's also an amazing YouTuber. Uh, go and check out his, his YouTube channel. I can I say from the from the get-go, you should definitely go and check out. He has some of the best tutorials in animation. He's also a senior Thank animator you. at Blizzard, very accomplished animator. And uh, I met him when we were at iAnimate. That was the first time that I saw you. Mm -hmm. And then I checked your YouTube channel. I was like, man, this guy is, is amazing. Like, he's really, really cool. And and you just seem the most a humble person. And whenever somebody is talented and humble together, I always feel like I need to chat with them. I need to get to know their journey, their animation, um, you know, passion and what brings them to this place that we uh, like to call animation industry, games industry. Yeah. So welcome. And uh, yeah, it would be great for you to kind of like start chatting about like how you got started, Mark. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be many more questions. And fingers crossed we can get some questions from the from the chat as well so we can actually answer them live as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, so getting into like the game industry, I feel like it's probably similar to, I feel like probably a lot of other people in that like I just grew up loving video games and just played video games when I was younger, I played it with my older brother, played a lot of like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy 11, a lot of like MMOs Amazing. and uh, went to a lot of Halo LAN parties, <laughs> did a lot of those. <laughs> well, Xbox, Back. PlayStation. Yes. PC. Yeah. Yeah. Xbox, uh, Xbox. lug the giant TVs around, got them all hooked up. Yeah. Xbox 360. Was that it? Uh, no, this, that too, but I actually did the original Halo 1 Xbox, oh, Xbox back in like 2001, 2002. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was the like OG Xbox with a big, like, yeah. Controller. That was, they were yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, yeah, that kind of just, so I just grew up playing a lot of video games and then that kind of just naturally transitioned into just like, being you know, like, I feel like a, it would be cool to work on these. Like I love playing video games, probably be fun to make them. So that's kind of like how it all kind of started from there. It was just like interest in video games. Um, and then as I got older, I kind of was like, I feel like this would be something I would want to would want to get into. Um, and so I actually started uh, teaching myself uh, Blender a long time ago. It was probably I might have been like 11 or 12 years old, like a dad downloaded Blender for me, found oh, some yeah. like Blender books. <laughs> yeah, this was probably like in 2003, 2004. So like Blender's UI was a mess back then. Oh, Definitely not not how it yeah. is today. That must have been the beginning of Blender, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it was like, early. Like just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just to start, because I remember when it came out, everybody was like, it's cute. But uh, at, the, at that <laughs> point in time, like this, um, this like free software that was like crowd, like you know, mm -hmm. supported and all that stuff. Everybody at that point thought it's not gonna work out. But yeah. It now. <laughs> yeah, it's huge now. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. So that yeah, I kind of just started messing around with that, um, messing around with Blender um, all through like high school and stuff. Um, and I didn't, I definitely didn't know I wanted to do actual like character animation. I just was trying to mess around with kind of everything to see what sort of like clicked for me and like what I enjoyed most. So I did a lot of 3D modeling, a lot of like lighting and rendering. Um, and I think it was also just the sort of the content that was out there and the books that were out there all gravitated toward like the modeling side of things. Nice. So it was kind of just uh, like naturally like started to learn that first. Um, and it wasn't until uh, high school that I started actually getting into character animation. Um, and it was actually, uh, I watched, I don't know if you ever remember, uh, digital tutors. Of course. It was like a, yeah. Online yeah, yeah. video training. That was actually um, the first studio I, I joined after finishing animation mentor, but I actually was subscribed to them like all through high school, just learning, learning Maya and stuff. Did you join them as a tutor or mm -hmm. was it? Yeah, oh, I joined them as a, uh, right after finishing Animation Mentor, uh, I joined them as they were starting like a written tutorial side yeah. of things. So I joined as like a, 
animation rigging written tutorial. Then I eventually moved to actually doing like the video tutorials. But what, what, whatever happened to them? They were bought by somebody, right? Was it yep. Uh, they're bought by Pluralsight and then Pluralsight. laid everybody off. <laughs> So. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I, I remember their logo perfectly because it was like face of this dude, this cartoony face of this dude. This dude. Yeah, yeah. They used, used them quite a lot back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I remember watching uh, Delano Athias's, uh walk cycle tutorial. It was like yeah. the first first thing I watched. First animation I ever created was following that tutorial, which is walk cycle is not the best first an animation to do, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember just being like amazed by looking at like this 3d puppet and then making it move yeah. and that was kind of like where i was like oh this is this is something it's different like, than what i've been doing yeah exactly just giving life to things right yeah like, yeah going from actually static things modeling and rigging and stuff to all of a sudden like something has to carry yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's awesome that is amazing but yeah that goes way back like digital tutors alan welcome alan alan was talking about love digital tutors uh so nice. yeah those who know know i guess yes it was it was awesome it was yeah it was awesome working there i was there for almost three years i think um oh, so it was quite a while yeah did a lot of yeah did a lot of video tutorials for them and yeah it was a lot so of fun was that your first paid gig after mm -hmm. before you got into the industry before you got into like actually working yeah yeah, so that was, yeah, I got that. I was wrapping up Animation Mentor, like starting to finish like the Polish portfolio class. Right. And uh, I was like, I need to start looking for <laughs> looking for work. And because uh, so I live in Oklahoma, which as far as like the video game animation industry, it's like central US. There's nothing really here for right. that. Um, but Digital Tutors happened to be headquartered in Oklahoma, which I didn't know. I just randomly went to like their contact page and I was like, they're only like an hour from me. So I like I actually had a YouTube channel at that time, um, way back when doing video tutorials. And I just sent them like my YouTube channel. I was like, Hey, are you guys looking for more instructors? Um, right. Yeah. It was, yeah. And that, yeah, it was, I was pretty lucky to, to join that too. I was, I think I was like 20, maybe 20 at the time. Felt like I was way in over my head too, because it was kind of just like I'll just try to apply here and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. it worked out though. It worked out. It, it must have given you a lot of confidence to actually go from investing in this uh, um, course, right? Because I guess you did animate, and mm -hmm. then not knowing if it was going to pay off, and all of a sudden getting a job because of it and because of YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of like the a bit of a kind of a gamble a bit of just like because um i decided not to like go the college route when i was in high school and i kind of gave myself sort of like a couple options i was like i was going to go to just get like a four-year degree um but then at that time i knew i wanted to do animation so i was like i really just want to focus on animation so i was like i'll do animation mentor um i'll do that it's a year and a half program if that doesn't work out then i'll go <laughs> then i'll go to college to do that but yeah. yeah, lucky enough that it, it ended up working out. Yeah. So, so how was the jump from, obviously you must have had other choice, other options. So going from digital tutors, being a tutor, writing, writing um, like uh, tutorials, written tutorials, to then going into games. I mean, it must have been a hard jump to actually go from, I have no experience to all of a sudden going yeah. into games because the connection yeah. is very clear. It's not very clear going from yeah. one format to the other, right? Yeah, it was, um, it was definitely difficult and um, I did not have a lot of confidence in my animation abilities because like when I was working at Digital Tutors there, like bread and butter was doing intro courses, like that's where they made most of their money. So like the video tutorials I was making was like intro to animation in Maya and it was like, here's how to set a keyframe and here's how to like delete keyframes and all the basics of it. So I was doing that for like three years um, and it was, I actually, uh, so I really wanted to leave and like work on games, but there was definitely a side of me that obviously like scared, like leaving a job, um, and risking that. Yeah. Stability. <laughs> um, and so I actually, uh, I like made the choice. I was like, I'm going to spend a year to focus on making a better reel while I'm still working here to spend a year, just like Great. focusing on animation in my free time, try to make a better reel and actually go out to work on a game. Um, and then about a week after I decided that was when Pluralsight laid every, 
shut the studio down. Oh, no. So I was like, okay, so I don't have a gear. I need to do this now. Wow, that was a quick turn left. That's crazy. Yeah. So you actually, now you don't have a year, you have a week. So what yeah. happened next? Uh, so I was really fortunate because um, when I was in uh, high school taking Animation Mentor, there was one animation studio near where I lived called Steelhouse Productions. Um, and they were a really small studio. They did some animation, but they also did like a lot of motion graphics kind of commercial work and that kind of thing. Um, but they had two uh, animators there. And I interned there while I was in Animation Mentor for a couple months mm -hmm. um, before uh, joining Digital Tutors. So I like reached out to them and I was like, hey, I just got laid off. You guys aren't looking for an animator, are you? <laughs> and then they were like, actually, yeah, we've got some projects that we might need you on. So oh, I was like, OK. So, yeah, yeah, so I got, yeah, I got laid off on a Thursday and I went and interviewed there the day after on Friday. And then when did you started working, I think it was that Monday, I think. Wow. So I like so it ended up. Well. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was really fortunate because, yeah, th I ended up getting like a two month severance from getting laid off. And then I just started the next job and they paid nice. a little bit more. So I was like, OK, maybe this wasn't <laughs> this wasn't maybe. so bad. Yeah. <laughs> That is amazing. That's really, really cool. So that was the first step into actually mm -hmm. working full time as an animator. Was it yes. a, a game gig or was it was it like a, it was a lot of different things. So they were a small studio, so they're just working on kind of just any project they can get. Mm -hmm. So I worked on like this short film that was sort of like a pilot episode that this guy was wanting to do right. um, some character animation for that. We did a lot of VR, AR stuff that was about right when like Vive was soon coming out so they wanted to get a jump on that so we were making a lot of like content for that um and then i worked on just a few smaller like animation gigs at that studio um but it was uh i eventually while i was working there too i kind of was like i think i need to i want to work on actual like video games or something like a, a little bit bigger i guess it was kind of like my aspirations yeah yeah did I give you perspective? Because I worked in a studio like that. Um, well, it's actually more than one, but I worked in a studio that basically you do a lot of everything mm -hmm. and you have very little time. The pressure is like super big because all of us, all clients want everything yesterday. So now yeah. you have less time that you want and all that stuff. Did I give you like um, even more determination to work in games because it takes longer because of all the, all the other stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think it definitely did kind of, piqued my interest even more wanting to work in games. Um, and I think um, also we were doing quite a bit of like VR, AR stuff, which I didn't quite like as much then, cause they were kind of, it was kind of like video gamey, but it wasn't just like a straight on, like, like big budget game that I've always wanted to work on. Like, yeah. And it's hard, v VR games are so hard to Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, it tough. I worked in one, just one, but just like when you think that you have it all turned, like planned out, turns out yeah. that people can actually look over here as well. And then you haven't accounted for the rest of the animation that the character Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard. It's hard work. Yeah. It opens up like a whole new perspective on everything. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, I want to give a shout out to Augustine Miguel uh, from Buenos Aires. Welcome. Awesome. Good question. We'll get to it in a bit. William Anim. Um, my mic is a little bit low. Oh. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I My mic? Uh, is mine, I think. Uh, is uh, is uh, Mark's mic low as well, William? Let us know. But I think I can actually um, change my my settings somewhere. So I'm, use, I'm using a new a new thing to actually stream. And uh, this is why we had some technical issues and we were late. So apologies in advance. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me see if I can actually uh, turn up my mic a little bit to make sure that it sounds better uh, for everybody. Uh, I think is uh, this maybe. Don't know. Let me know if that actually made any difference. Fingers crossed it did. Um, <laughs> Mark's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's good. Cool. It's, it's only me then. Um, cool. So um, you actually kind of like got into, um, you actually got determined to actually get into games. So how did that jump happen? And did it? Uh, you expected or? So um, 
I realized that I kind of needed to like push myself and take a bit more risk because um, I realized when I was at Digital Tutors and I gave myself like I was thought I was going to give myself a year yeah. and then it ended up only being like a week. Um, I was like, I that worked out for me. So maybe I just need to take the jump. So <laughs> I uh, I applied for it actually wasn't for a game, but it was for an animated kids show called Flugels. That was for NBC. Um, Flugels. Yeah. 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 It's a, not it's super well known. It's just like these three little alien characters, really fun, like cartoony style of animation. Right. Um, so I was like, I think I'm just going to go freelance and try that for a little bit. Um, so I ended up leaving that studio, went freelance to work on that TV show. Um, and then working on that TV show was even a, another push of like, I, I really want to work on games because <laughs> like TV show deadlines, they're, they're tricky and yes, tricky. Uh, yeah yeah and it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it did definitely help me in figuring out i needed to fix and work on my workflow because like jumping on tv like the amount of animation that you have to do per day like my pose to pose like stepped mode of animation just like wasn't working so i kind of was like forced to try to work like layered and just try to find a new method of working did i help um, you or there was it detrimental you think? Uh, it, I think it definitely helped just because yeah. I was, yeah, kind of like forced to try something because I probably just would have stayed what I knew forever. My okay. same workflow. And then I was kind of just like, I, I'm not going to be able to hit these deadlines unless I can animate faster. And I can't animate very fast pose to pose. So yeah, it was yeah, kind of like, like, yeah, which, which kind of helps in games as well, right? Because you depend yeah. on deadlines and all that stuff. So yeah, definitely. I see, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. But that, Working on that TV show actually ended up working out because um, at the same studio that was working on the TV show, they were like, hey, we got Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Would you yeah. be interested in working on that? And I was like, yes, of course I would. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I joined on Spyro on like the cinematics, uh, working on the third one for that like remaster. Um, so that was like my first experience working on like a bigger a bigger game like that. That's amazing. Um, That's amazing. And, and um I, like so, I know you from Dauntless um, mm -hmm. because of the animations that you made and stuff. Was that like straight away after, like like after, or did it took you a few years to get there? How uh, so that was pretty soon after working on Spyro. Um, yeah. Because uh, I was working on Spyro, I knew there was only uh, like a few months of work left on it, and so. Um, believe uh steamroller reached out to me because i think i'd posted some animations on like linkedin or something um so okay. they were like would you be interested in interviewing and i was like sure um and then yeah i was i realized they seemed like a really cool place to work and they were working on some really cool projects so i was like i decided to leave working on spyro a little bit before the project was actually done because i was like I'm not sure if there's going to be another gig after this yeah. too and like so I was like, I think this will be, yeah, a better, a better option. So I ended up joining Steamroller um, right after Spyro. And then that's when I started working on Dauntless, which was like kind of my first uh, working on actual like kind of in-game animation, like gameplay yeah, animation. Nice. Also, were you, were you actually doing cutscenes previously? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Spyro game. was all like cutscene type of stuff. That makes sense. That actually makes complete sense. So how was that change? Because it's always interesting to me. How was that change? Because I got it the other way around. I actually got studying gameplay and then ended up in doing uh, okay. point. And then I was like, actually, gameplay. So I went back to gameplay. So um, how was that change? Because obviously it's way more complicated and, you know, engines and things. They can be. Like, the, yeah, it was. Um, it was definitely for me, it was intimidating because I had never done that before. Right. And uh, on Dauntless, so we were kind of like an outsource studio hired to do all the creature animation, mm -hmm. all the big like behemoths. Um, so we actually didn't have to implement directly in the engine where we were working. We would like make all the gameplay animations and then send it over and the, right. the studio would implement it. So I didn't have to um, to do animation. much of the, yeah. And then, yeah. but still like just figuring out how to make good gameplay animations that work well in gameplay yeah. was definitely intimidating. And yeah, I think, uh, I mean, just in general, like imposter syndrome was like 
definitely rearing its head then <laughs> yeah and, and the, yeah the, the biggest normally the the biggest thing that um that i always ask and uh, by the way shout out to everybody joining the chat there's lots of people asking questions and mentioning and and uh roma elzo your number one fan here mark um, nice he's here like to support you so it's really thank you easy. roma like most likely makes you feel at home um awesome so um, what I was going to ask you is this, iteration, gameplay, those things are, are like definitely something that I've seen so many animators, they come from film, VFX, actually basically crumble under the constant iteration that you have to do in games, Lar longer cycles, shorter cycles, mm -hmm. more idles, idle breaks, different directions, things like yeah. that. How did you find all that? Did you find that? Uh, so uh, I actually found that to be really fun for me um, because like, because uh, I hadn't really experienced much of that, especially working on like cutscenes or anything, and I got to really enjoy doing like the transition animations and that kind of thing. Right, right. Um, I ended up just there. The, the the animations that usually aren't the most like flashy, they're not like cool attack animations, but uh, they do really increase like the quality of the animation in game when you actually start like stubbing in like the nice transitions to everything. So it's like it's a fun process when you see that change of like where it looked before when you just had like straight blends between like your run to an idle animation to actually go in there and like hand animate like a really cool transition. Um, it, it yeah, definitely was different, but it was a fun, fun process to learn process. all that. Yeah. But if you were looking at uh, transitions and you enjoying doing the transitions and seeing that iteration process, then it tells me that you're genuinely a gameplay animator through and through. Cause uh, there's a lot of people that go like, I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, I can yeah. See it. Like it happens for a second. You can barely see. Yeah. It. When does it happen? So uh, the fact that you actually enjoy that—that that actually is, is really cool to hear. Yeah, it's it's definitely the a process that when I'm starting to animate those, I have a lot of fun with them because it's also a cool and interesting opportunity to find ways to make them more fun to do as well. Like, yeah. um, and just finding because I work a lot on like creature side of things, like AI type of animation um yeah so like um figuring out how to way, ways to add like a bit more like personality into how a creature stops from mm -hmm. like going to like from like a run cycle like if it's a big like bear like creature it's gonna have like way more weight so like yeah. figuring out how to create that while also trying to do it quickly and working in a bit more of like a time constraint as well exactly exactly it's basically it's the way i i, I kind of like uh, compare it to is basically the hour in betweens of, <laughs> yeah. of, you know what i mean like like you know you have the main poses and they have to sell the character but then you have fun with the in-betweens on how to mm -hmm. get pose to pose in the most interesting way and this is i feel exactly like you i think having really good transitions from state to state actually sells the animation a lot and this is when you can mm -hmm. get the characters to hold the, the wall for a little bit or yeah, like yeah. Gamble a little bit and and it just gives so much texture to your animation mm -hmm. game, which is great which you really yeah love. exactly yeah. yeah i was actually playing starfield last week and that was the first thing i did so i jumped to third person and it was just like looking at all the transition animations for exactly. the player <laughs> that happens to all animators i'm yeah. pretty sure if you're playing online people must think you're crazy just jump <laughs> yeah. side to side forward backwards you know? yeah <laughs> it's really cool um so yeah we, we we're getting quite a few people on board uh we have uh Oh yeah, Jerome uh, here. Shout out to both of you. You both are an inspiration. Thanks a lot, Jerome. Thank you. Really, really cool. Uh, Sedana, hello, sir. You both are great. Love watching you, Harvey and Mark, which is awesome. I think this is what you get when you get you. two YouTubers coming together, joining forces. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like so. Uh, um, uh, uh, T Gawa animations. Um, I, I've been looking at actually how to change my settings on the volume. I don't know exactly how to change the money to actually look look it up. Apologies, apologies. Um, there's a few a few questions, but I, yeah. before we get to them, Mark, because I know you are limited in time, I would like to actually go into the last stage of your career, and then we can talk about YouTube. Answer some questions. Talk about YouTube, but yeah. the last stage of your career at this point in time, obviously, because mm -hmm. you're young. So you have lots of career. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going from obviously working on Dauntless to then now working in Blizzard. You've been working in Bli on Blizzard in Blizzard for how long now? Uh, I think almost a year. It's like a, a year now. Eleven months or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So how mm -hmm. did that transition happen, and, and how are you finding it? Um, 
so yeah, I was uh, before Blizzard. I was working for uh, People Can Fly, um, oh, which yeah. is sorry. I thought you just went okay. So how, yeah, how, how how was that experience? Uh, so pe working for People Fly was really fun experience as well because yeah. just another group of super talented animators. Uh, Ricky Wood teaches at I Animate. I learn oh, yeah, so much yeah. from him. Yeah. It I was. Him. I don't know him, but I saw him. And yeah, really I mean, him. talk about being like intimidated when you're working with someone like that, and like yeah, every animation they show, you're just like, oh, how the heck did they do that? <laughs> yeah, but you work there, so you get like a chance to actually like learn how they do it, which is which is awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, but but so after uh, Steamroller, I actually went to Zenimax for a little bit to work on Elder Scrolls Online. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it was a lot of lots of fun creature animation for that as well, um, and that's kind of how it ended up. Like after working on Dauntless, uh, Dauntless was like my first um, work into doing any creature animation. Like uh, Spyro was a little bit just because there were like some dragons, but they're bipedal dragons, so it's it's not too different. Um, so that was like my first um, try working on creature animation. So that was definitely intimidating, jumping onto giant like creatures like that. Uh, but I definitely fell in love with working on big creatures and working on that gameplay side of things of yeah working on the the gameplay elements of figuring out those giant fights and getting all like the attack animation set up but um so yeah i went to zenimax for a little bit worked on Elder Scrolls online then went to uh people can fly and that transition to go to uh people can fly was a lot of it actually came down to wanting to work permanent remote um was it that was that after COVID or before COVID? It was so I joined Zenimax and I actually only worked in the office for I think three months before COVID hit, three or four months, and then we went remote from there. Um, but I knew we would be eventually going back to an office when everything went back to normal. It was kind of what every what was being said. Um, so I was kind of like, it was a tough choice because I really enjoyed working there too. Another group of really talented animators, a really fun game to work on. Yeah. So, but I was like, I think this is just what I need to do. Um, uh, gave my wife and I a chance to move back home closer to family. So it was like one of those things where I was like, this is just, I think this yeah. is where I need to, yeah, need yeah. to need to do. So yeah, I was able to work remote for People Can Fly um, for a couple of years um, before joining uh, Blizzard. That's great. And, and, and I guess like COVID, like most people gave you perspective about being close to family, what's mm -hmm. working in life, career obviously yeah. is going well, but it's not everything and things like that. Do you think that's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, yeah, yeah it definitely gave a different perspective. And we had been moving around quite a bit. Like we moved to Florida to work at Steamroller. Then we moved to Maryland to work at Zenimax. And it was like yeah. doing that for a couple of years and then just being like, I think we have a, a chance to actually, you know... Go back home closer to family. So that's great, man. Yeah, no, I actually I commend everybody, all the wives of animators out there. Yeah. The because <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not it's like I, I remember, like, my wife actually met, like, you know, a few other wives of animators uh, over the years, and they talked about the experiences in moving about just this before yeah. COVID when it was normal for you to, when you get a job, you just move to just whatever move. The job yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and I did that a bunch of times before COVID, and uh, yeah, it's, it's get, it gets harder the older you get, especially mm -hmm. as you start getting a family. You start to kind of like question everything as you actually, yeah. as you move, because yeah, the career as you, you do well, it becomes less less important. Right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for so, sure. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and now at Blizzard, are you working also remote, full remote? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I guess, the same right yeah i was uh i was able to join as like a, a permanent remote for them um so yeah yeah that still able really to work cool. remote amazing amazing and um, yeah, definitely lucky yeah exactly exactly and uh are you enjoying it how's, how's mm -hmm. things how yes yeah, yeah yeah it's been really awesome so far yeah. uh it's definitely um definitely a studio that when i first you know started to get into animation you know, as I was working at Animation Mentor, like Blizzard would be one of the places oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah I would want to work at. Yeah, yeah, okay. it was like definitely an aspiration. So, yeah, finally actually getting to work work there is definitely a like a big milestone. Definitely intimidating too. Lots of 
crazy talented animators there. Yeah, a lot to learn too, but it's yeah, it's really yeah. fun. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we were talking about this just offline about like how amazing, how like intimidating it must be to have all these animators around you with a lot of talent, right? But at the same time, it makes you like elevate your game most likely mm -hmm. because you yeah. don't sit on your laurels, even though you've been working for so many years. You feel like you can still there's still a ways ways to go for you to before you hit your max. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If ever. Yeah, no, and I, and I, uh, yeah, like, uh, I think I've learned to just like throughout my career, like imposter syndrome is definitely something I've always like and struggled with yeah. as I've worked in games. Like I've always been like, they're going to find out that like, I'm a fraud. I can't do this. <laughs> it's like <laughs> any day now. Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it was funny cause like, as I was just getting into like working in games, I was always like, if I work in games for like three years, then it'll probably go away. And then yeah. it's like, well, maybe if I get like senior level, then it would definitely go away. Definitely and it's away. like, no, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah exactly. And it was like, especially like at Steamroller, when they asked uh, for me to be a, like a lead animator, mm. I was like, that was, I think that was when I had like imposter syndrome the worst because it was like, I don't think I'm not ready for this. I think you guys are making a huge mistake. <laughs> This is definitely going away, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I know the feeling exactly. I know the feeling exactly. It's so weird. Um, how long were you at Elite for, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I think it was like eight months or something like that before I went and joined Zenimax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's weird. It's very weird because the, like, the longer you make it, the it becomes all again like another career path of like mm -hmm. just when you're starting animating you're like how long can i do this for most likely it's going to be a few months and they're going to be like yeah or, <laughs> yeah mind, whatever matter. yeah let's get somebody yeah. else but then yeah. it keeps going so it's, it's, it's actually yeah maybe not so bad after all <laughs> yeah i think you always imagine it way worse than it ever is yeah i think that's right. yeah i always definitely when i first started being a lead, I was like the whole time. I was like, any day now, they're gonna be like, never mind. I think we're gonna, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amazing, yeah. amazing. So um, awesome chat so far, Mark. Thanks a lot for actually coming and actually taking yeah, the time. Yeah, for sure. Um, so some of the questions that um, we are getting thrown. Um, let me see. So much love from Buenos Aires, Augustine. I would love to ask about a very frustrating deadline that was a nightmare to accomplish. Those are always good stories. So do you have any of those, Mark? Uh, about? About a uh, nightmare, uh, like a, a frustrating deadline that was very hard to accomplish. I'm pretty sure you have lots of those stories. Um, I, I know I have. Yes. There's definitely been a lot, especially working in, even working on that small TV show, Flugels. There's a yeah. lot of those, those deadlines that were really tough to hit. Yeah, definitely. Definitely can be also like really scary. Like as you get closer to it, you're like, I keep getting notes on this and yeah. deadlines Same coming up. Time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, the most frustrating thing that I feel, at least when it comes to deadlines that actually, especially when it was like, you had this amount of time and now you have this amount of time to do it, but they still expect the same quality. But yeah. It's, it's how like they actually, people don't seem to understand how long animation takes no matter how long you work in the industry like if you're not an animator if, mm -hmm. you don't, if you're not in the animation department people really don't truly really understand how long animation takes they always think that it takes less and it's yeah. much easier than, yes. than expected and well, especially when deadlines are super short and it gets shorter it's like but how much longer can you animate the walk cycle <laughs> yeah. Walk cycle. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. How many more rounds of notes can you get okay. on this? Exactly. <laughs> Keep iterating on this, then uh, yeah. maybe. But uh, but yeah, that's basically the the biggest uh, thing that keeps coming back is this idea that when there's a deadline that is really aggressive, that people don't understand how long animation takes, so they take. Mm -hmm. they, genuinely think that you can do it in half of the time. And then when you do it in half of the time, you show it to them and be like, but this was not as good as the last thing you did. Yeah. And realize, because it's too, like, you gave me like, you know, no time to do it, right? Yeah. And it's like also the, to, the thing too, where like a lot of times you might, especially with like those really tight deadlines, you'll have to like ghost hours where you're working at night, technically like not on the clock. So they're like, well, you did this really fast. It's like, yeah, I had to work all night to, <laughs> to get it done. Hours on this yeah. 
<laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, there's there's plenty of of frustrating uh, stories for sure, Augustine. Unfortunately, as this industry is about all about um, NDAs and and it's very yeah. difficult, it's very difficult to talk about them, but they're definitely there. Uh, there's yeah. Of those. Um, let me see what else do we have. Um, if you see any mark that you actually would like to actually tackle, feel free to actually pick upon. Uh, um, uh, I have a question. Purple Haze. I have a question. By the way, welcome, Purple Haze. Nice to see you here again, man. Um, I have a question. Studios looking for gameplay animators or animators. Uh, what are they looking for in terms? If I'm a gameplay animator and I'm also showing in engine work, is that good enough? Oh, I see. So, what are people looking for in gameplay animators? So, yeah, that's a good question. So, what's your experience, Mark, when it comes to recruiting people? And, and uh, I think the the main thing is uh, like good body mechanics for gameplay animation. Um, like, almost all of my work is all body mechanics. Um, I haven't worked on like a dialogue shot in a long, a long time. It's all a lot of attacks and different different types of body mechanics so like you'll need to have like a definitely a focus on really strong body mechanics um and um yeah definitely showing like stuff you've implemented in engine 2 is really helpful just knowing that you have that understanding um even though like a lot of places will have their own like proprietary game engine that you'll still have to learn learn the ins and outs of when you join that studio but like even doing it in unreal it's you'll still be able to transfer a lot of a lot of that knowledge and stuff to other other studios as well yeah absolutely yeah no i couldn't agree more i think i think as well like uh, i keep going about it in my videos but like uh, showing implementation shows that you're thinking about how animations are broken down in terms of like mm -hmm. you know as so into and a loop in and out of and so yeah outside. and that shows that you understand what it takes to make a game at least the beginnings of it and that actually makes uh, makes it much more valuable because one of the biggest fears that studios have is that they're going to have to teach you everything like you have mm -hmm. the skill but you have to learn everything yeah. when it comes to their engine or whatever but if you at least showcase that you understand going from my to unreal to back to my mm -hmm. iterating and then that's actually what you do day to day so help yeah out. yeah definitely yeah um uh william anim uh watching you from colombia oh cool nice <laughs> Hola, ¿qué tal? Um, and then uh, Sadana asks, my question is, as uh, in India, most of the institutes are just teaching animation for practical purpose. Also, they don't know much about animation and its, its workflow. So I just wasted two years, learned nothing. I've learned animation only by myself because of such great artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went into, I want to get into the games industry as a, as a fresh as a junior animator, I guess. Um, so tell me about the process of entering the games industry. Tell me about the tests given to an artist and when they look into your showreel and tests. Yeah. So maybe this can be like the next step afterwards. Yeah. Like, you know, in your eyes, Mark, what happens after somebody actually kind of like have has a good showreel? Uh, yeah. So um... Yeah, if they've got like a, a really solid demo reel that kind of demonstrates kind of everything that we would want to see, um, usually it would there would end up being like a test of some sort. Um, the tests I've always taken for studios have always been biomechanics related for any type of gameplay. Uh, People Can Fly was like a creature, creature type of animation test um, and some other animation tests I've taken throughout the years and I've actually failed quite a few of them so that's something else that you'll run into it's like yeah you'll fail you'll fail animation tests um but like uh yeah i think it's once you get the the test um i will say like tests there's definitely a subject that like i always go back and forth on animation tests uh myself um it's like it can be really helpful for the studio um, to get a good sense of your skill level, especially if like the demo reel is like really close, like it's like mm -hmm. really good, but there might be like one thing missing. Like we want to make sure they can do this. Yeah. Um, that's where animation tests can like really come in, where you can like have them do something that's not on their reel that you would like to see. Um, definitely a, a tricky situation though, of just especially if like you got to understand like 
giving someone, you know, all this time they have to spend on an animation test that's usually like unpaid and it's definitely a tricky situation, but it's kind of like the the norms of the the industry of usually expecting some type of type of animation test. Um, no, yeah, no, it's, it's completely right. Like, so um, normally they happen mostly when you have very little experience, but lots of talent, right? Mm -hmm. Because what people are trying to test is that, is this guy for real? First and foremost, it is, it, yeah. is his skills. There's a lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot of like people kind of sharing knowledge or copying tutorials or and not copying tutorials, but following tutorials and mm -hmm. basically having certain walk cycles or certain things Then you want to make sure that you want to give them a test that is specific to the studio or the game that you're working in and be like, how would they do if they would work here? And that's basically what the dream yeah. is. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and then the second thing as well is like, there's a lot of uh, tests. So I remember early on in my career, I was not ready. I did a test for Naughty Dog that like they asked me to basically it was like a walk cycle going to a, a like a ladder and then jumping over, over the cliff and then going somewhere else. And at the time I thought, I fully thought that I only had to go through the things and then all that's all I had to do. But what they're really testing was my creative ability to create something interesting out of mm -hmm. the situation, right? Um, and this is basically what people don't tell you, right? Sometimes they ask, they expect for you to go above and beyond and give them something that surprises them, that is interesting, because yeah. I'm pretty sure they must have seen the same thing that I did, yeah, very innocently, of like just somebody running, walking, running, and jumping, because that's mm -hmm. really boring. So you are also trying to understand how the animator thinks and are they the kind of person that can give me ideas for the studio for as an animation director. So there's a bunch of different things. But as you get yeah. more experience and you have more much like like Mark, for example, and you have many like examples of like games that I worked in that I did really amazing creative things, it becomes less important because you can just look at Dauntless and then be like, Mark is amazing. So let's go. <laughs> There's no need for a test. <laughs> so that's basically what happens. Is it more mm -hmm. important as you become a junior, if that makes sense. Yeah. It can, yeah, it could definitely also be good too, like um, kind of giving them the the experience that they would have at the studio being like, here's make an attack animation that is no longer than like 200 frames. Exactly. Um, it needs to be like maybe a, a two hit combo attack. And then that's kind of like all they might give you. And then that's where they kind of want you to just be creative and like come up with kind of your own spin on things, which is like the most fun part about gameplay animation um, is like getting the chance of getting the uh a project or like a, a brief like that where design might come to you and be like we just need an attack animation uh go make an attack animation and then you have like free reign of just like all right i'll just come up with something really cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's part of the challenge as a gameplay animator as well because you have to have limitations a lot of the time design wise about what's possible they might tell you you need have to do an animation it, like that is 100 frames long or 50 frames long or it cannot be you know it has to be like so fast so it has to be so mm -hmm. slow um and the character is of a certain height or you know can only yeah. can only attack with one arm behind his his, his his back and it has one hand only how would you go about it so part of the challenge as a gameplay animator is for you to come up with interesting ideas based on the limitations that you have in gameplay yeah um, yeah for sure then again, the tests help to actually find out if you're the kind of person that would actually be ready, ready for a great, uh, right for the studio. Yeah. 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 And yeah, the, it can, it can be difficult too. If you do like an animation test, you get to that point and then you don't pass the animation test, but it's, it's oh. one of those things that, you know, it happens to everybody. I feel like yeah, they have yeah. that. Yeah. They have that point where, and I, I remember one of the first animation tests I did, um, it was for like a gameplay position and I really didn't know exactly what went into gameplay and so my attack animation would never have worked for a game it was like okay. starting from a pose ending in a completely different pose that was not the same <laughs> idle hose and I was like uh, yeah you now looking back it. it's like no wonder they didn't <laughs> exactly. you can see it now but back then when they give you the no answer it's so hard for yeah you. it's like what why yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you, you because you work so hard for those five days or seven days or whatever mm -hmm. time they gave you to do this the test, and especially when it's a big name studio, a studio they really get want to get into, and they're working an exciting project. You want it so bad, 
and for those five seven days that they give you the test you daydream about stuff yeah and you're like oh my god it wouldn't it be nice so when it doesn't happen it really really hurts but don't take it personally because it's yeah. really all about making sure that they hire the right people for the job and for the studio given the specific project maybe you perfect for another project but maybe not perfect for this project yeah exactly um really cool but a good question really good question yeah Adana. so um um how are you doing on time mark uh good Hello. yeah yeah About another 30 minutes another 30 minutes yeah. perfect yeah so um uh by the way uh advanced animation academy that is in the chat right now nice. it's another amazing uh yes. youtube channel by jerome you guys should absolutely check it out jerome is awesome and yeah, has a cool youtube channel thanks a lot for helping answering the questions as well jerome um let me see do we have anything else any other questions mm. i don't think so we can actually kind of like keep it there because i need i have questions about youtube for you oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right me too. Uh, so like what actually so that's like arguably the most important and interesting thing to me uh of you because i can definitely see that obviously you have been on youtube for a while you just mentioned that you had a youtube channel even before this youtube channel if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. right yeah um what was the catalyst the thing the the passion that actually made you start youtube and what keeps you going because it's hard like you, yeah people don't understand how hard it is but it's incredibly yeah. hard so what keeps you going um i think just being able to like teach other people um and like seeing the comments of like how how this tutorial helped someone figure out like a problem they had that's like definitely a a reason to to like keep doing it and kind of even though it is like a lot of work and i'm down to i realize like one video a week is probably all like <laughs> i could do right now if i'm lucky so but like yeah that's definitely a a big like motivating factor for it and um i think like actually what got me interested in like doing youtube again was actually watching your videos i would watch your videos yeah and i would yeah i watched all your videos and like and it was like uh <laughs> Yeah, I loved watching them and I was like, I, I want to get back into doing really? this. This would be, oh, yeah, man. I was like, this would be a lot of fun. I mean, my and, day. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, that's that's kind of like what pushed me. Like, I think I want to do this, but I wanted to make sure like I had, I kind of sort of knew sort of the approach that I wanted to take with my YouTube channel. Um, yeah. And I think like the first, what I decided to do was like the first video I made like coming back because I had posted some some of my old digital tutors YouTube videos I think they're still up on my YouTube channel One um, of the first ones that you that like to just throw them up there yeah I like I took a, a snippet of like an eight minute clip of one of the digital tutors one and like threw them up there um, nice. one of those still has like the most views it's a super old I don't even know if it really yeah, applies anymore old. but <laughs> it's like a good straight video but yeah I mean, am I but uh yeah I think um it was, yeah, I was definitely watching your videos. And then I decided I wanted to do my first video on doing like workflow um, because yeah. that was something that I always struggled with when I was learning animation, especially at Animation Mentor. And like, um, I really didn't have a good workflow that I felt like worked for how I like to animate. So I like, um, I kind of just stuck with whatever workflow I was taught, which was like stepped pose to pose, like, yeah. spend hours figuring out every single pose for your animation and then so it was very like think about poses first and not animation which it was always hard for my brain to work that way because like I couldn't I needed to figure out what the transitions were going to look like I needed to like figure out the in-betweens and it was hard for me to like even visualize what my animation would look like when I was working like pose to pose um, so that was something that I really started messing around with that workflow on Dauntless um, was just like a very layered kind of approach. Um, so I kind of just wanted to share in case everybody, anybody else was like having the same struggle I was having learning animation. Yeah. 
But yeah, but that tutorial is the one that you have the box and you actually kind of like putting the box in the hips and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That tutorial is amazing. Like everybody, like at least I've watched it a couple of times. I know people that actually like we even know when I was in um, in INMA, people were like, oh yeah, Mark, Mark Master's tutorials about the box and all that stuff. My students were telling <laughs> me about it. It's like I follow this That's thing cool. and I'm like, that actually works perfect. <laughs> uh, so I, I do think that tutorial like catches fire and, and uh, like I think people really listen and I think the tutorials that you make and, and how you explain things are really, really clear. I'm very jealous of how eloquent you are because I, my, most of the stuff that I say comes out half crooked and, and <laughs> half of the time I feel like, I, if I, am I making sense? Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say that like for editing by the way Thank God for yeah editing. yeah no yeah there's so much yeah i will say like there's a lot of mess ups in my videos that i just cut out it's yeah it's good, it's good. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, just edit it all out it's yeah amazing. so yeah um so at the moment you kind of like uploading about a video a week right mm -hmm. uh, in terms yeah. of is there anything obviously everybody to me at the very least i feel like the more animation channels we have out there especially for gameplay the better it is because i do think that when i first started my youtube channel the thing that got me interested was that gameplay to me was awesome but everybody was like so you animate for movies you animate for VFX? yeah so exactly what does that entail and what do you do exactly and to me it was very mm -hmm. much like nobody knows about the this stuff except for people that work in the industry so mm -hmm. let me showcase how cool this is so for me, having people like yourself and, and other people like, you know, Jerome, for example, and thanks a lot, Jerome, for uh, for the uh, 499. Appreciate it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So um, so uh, I'll answer your question in just a second, if you don't mind. But yeah, like channels like Jerome, like yourselves, I think actually kind of like celebrate gameplay animation. Yeah. And now things have reverted like five years later, four years later, how long, however long I've been doing this. Um, most of my students, most of the people that I actually talk to, most of the people that actually come to me is just like, so what do you want to be? A gameplay animator. And it used mm -hmm. to be completely different. It's yeah. Like, I want to work in film, in VFX, but I have this question, you're an animator, you must know the answer. Right? Yeah. Um, which is completely different. It's, it's, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so it's really cool to see that. Do you feel, do you feel like your community is kind of like in that kind of vein that people want to like talk to you ask you questions about gameplay animation how mm -hmm. do I become a better gameplay animator how do i get into the industry things like that yeah for sure i think just because yeah a lot of my videos do lean on just the gameplay side of things um yeah i think a lot of the community is definitely interested in learning more about that um i do um try to figure out a good balance of doing both maya and blender content um, yeah. just because I know there's a lot of people that use Blender as well, um, yeah. especially people just getting into animation where they can't spend Absolutely. the insane price of Maya to learn yeah. animation. So yeah, I try to definitely find that that balance and like um, d mixing it and trying to throw in some Blender courses and tutorials in there as well. Um, I am I like I feel like I'm missing the boat on the Blender mainly because I'm lazy and I'm not actually spending time with Blender. So I might have lots it's, of questions for you at some point, Mark. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, my idea is to actually make a video. My initial video on Blender is going to be like, watch a pro fail at Blender. <laughs> yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good title. <laughs> and, uh, and then basically fail at Blender. Everybody in the comments is going to tell me like, you're such a noob, you should know these things. And then I'll kind of like take it from there. Because if I fail, if I start by failing, then I can just go grow from there. And then eventually I'll actually do, do great things. But everything that I've seen off Blender out there is actually amazing. Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways, it's better than Maya. So yeah. um, um, I just don't have the time just yet, but I really want to actually kind of like at least make a few videos on Blender because the, the, the community is there. And the, yeah, for sure. The want, the want is there. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, Jerome asks, thanks once again, Jerome, for the 499. This is great. I don't get, I don't get this uh, shout outs, money shout outs very often. I got this, I think it's the third time. Nice. And uh, I appreciate it a lot, man. It's really, really cool. It supports the channel in a big way. But uh, Jerome asks, what advice would you give to an animator taking their first lead role in a new studio? Also, thanks for the shout out. Um, I'll let you go first, Mark. Yeah, so... I think advice on that would just be try to have the the confidence because it could definitely be at least for me it was really scary um and i think 
something like for me it was, what made it kind of scary was the fact that like like i was fine you know giving like feedback and notes on people's work and like going up to someone's desk and be like hey can you check this out and be like yeah maybe tweak this or fix this yeah and then right when i became a lead i was like suddenly like oh now what i say is like they need to do this so, so what i say needs to like actually be good and it and that if they make those change hopefully it doesn't ruin the animation um <laughs> but i think like uh yeah i think having that that kind of confidence and kind of almost approaching it like you would kind of normally give feedback and yeah. notes and lead someone on a on a shot even if you're not their lead and just someone asking you to like check out their animation and just yeah. approaching it that way rather than like putting so much so much like pressure on yourself would be like i hope what i say is good and then not saying something because you're afraid it's not the right thing but like yeah. and the other thing too is like um like sometimes you don't give like the right notes on a shot and sometimes it might not be the best option and then also just being like completely open and being like yeah I, that was wrong what you had before worked better just just do what you did before what you did. yeah <laughs> exactly yeah yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think like what you said last is the most important bit and the most difficult bit because the people that I've seen failing at leading is because they are hard headed with their choices to a point where if they feel like somebody is saying you as a lead, you not making sense. I think that we should do it this way for these reasons. And if you know you're wrong and you know that yeah. you're wrong, and you still carry on with your thought process of like, just do what I say because I'm the lead in. Mm -hmm. That is when things go south so quick. Yes. Um, and, and then you start failing because that's a precedent and then people start talking behind your back. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden you're the guy that people fear and you lead by fear and he's just like, he's just a whole mess. So yeah. you being humble and like swallowing your pride and actually listening to other people and actually getting people that are senior or are, are like, you know, helping you out. If you have a director above you, then 100% ask them for help, ask mm -hmm. them for feedback, ask them for, I've, did, I've said this, I'm not too sure, what do you think? Um, just get like lots of people that actually are sounding boards for you yeah. because you will need it. Otherwise you're gonna end up isolated and that's the worst thing you can have. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that, yeah, I did quite a bit too, was talk with the supervising animators too and be like, so this is, kind of the notes I was giving, this is kind of where I think the shot, I'm thinking the shot might go and then seeing what they say and being like, seeing if they kind of uh, agree with that. And sometimes they might be like, actually, I think it might be fine how it is or something like that, so. Exactly, exactly. Because what happens over time is that the more decisions you take and the more you ask for question, for, for like help on your on your decisions, the more they start repeating itself. And then it gets to a point that you know more or less what the decision should be. And then you take that decision with more confidence. And that's mm -hmm. basically where you become like a good lead because you know that, you know, you've been there for long enough and you know exactly where this is going. So let's go this way because, you know, that's the best way. Yeah. But it should come from experience more than actually being stubborn about the situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I hope that helps, Jerome. I really hope that helps. Um, and uh, if you're actually taking that lead role and is yours already, congratulations. Yeah, like, by congrats. The way, it's a big step. It's a huge step. Um, uh, yeah, so Mark, um, what is the future for your YouTube channel? Uh, well? Yeah, so um, I, I want to get into doing more kind of long form tutorials too. Um, I've been doing lately just doing kind of shorter ones that I know I can get done quickly, but there's definitely like a whole backlog of just tutorial ideas that that might be like a couple hours long that I know are going to take more time, but kind of, I really want to, I really want to get to those. Um, nice. Definitely doing more, more blender content as well. is kind of like where, where I want to go. Um, I think the, one of the most difficult things for me about YouTube is, a lot of times I have a difficult time of figuring out what video to make. <laughs> like, I'll, yeah. it's a, yeah. it's tough. Well. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> sometimes I'll get into like a, a groove where I can, I'll just come up with like five ideas of like, I'm just going to record these five videos. I've got these all like came to be and it's nice. And then like, it'll just be like two months where I'm like, I can't yeah. think of anything. It's like a struggle to get a couple videos out. Like I do this. <laughs> yeah. I do this. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah no i i feel i feel exactly like you it's uh it's a struggle like to me i i make my life difficult because i don't record many videos in advance i wish i did i did it like for a few months and i was like man i got this this is done this is like i know i'm on a row and i have mm -hmm. a month and a half worth of content that is going to be great and you can just drop them in weekly and stuff. And then what happens is that you have a couple of weeks or two or three weeks that you're super lazy. And you're like, yeah. ah, it's fine. You're just like chilling with the family. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. like living a normal life that doesn't require it for you to do YouTube on yeah. extra after, after, after work hours. And then you just start kind of like sleeping again. And then I end up just doing a video a week. So my videos normally I record them maybe like the Friday before or Monday or Tuesday. And then it gets edited and then Friday mm -hmm. after gets dropped. So I'm always chasing yeah. the idea on the moment. But what I found is because I do the idea on the moment and it's something that has been in my mind rummaging or somebody's talking about something or whatever, then it means that things are a bit more current, right? So like, I don't know, I did a video about Baldur's Gate, for example, and it was just me thinking about the state of the industry and things like that and wondering, wouldn't people want to hear about this from a mm -hmm. developer's perspective? Maybe. So kind of like that. but. Most of the time, Mark, I feel like people don't really care what I say. I just put it out there and just hope for the best. Same. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah, it's usually one of the the videos that I feel like are gonna do really good. I'm just like, this is a good one. This this please will get some views. And then it's like nothing. Nope. And then the videos I like <laughs> I it, they come to me and I record in like ten minutes and then edit. Those are the ones that always seem the ones that I think aren't gonna go anywhere yeah. are always the ones that seem to exactly. <laughs> do better. You know what, what I find as well is videos that are slightly controversial that I'm really scared to put out, they do incredibly well. My very first, my top video, I think still is like how difficult it is to be an animator or like the reality of being an animator. That's what mm -hmm. it is. And I remember perfectly when I made that video was I was still in Sweden at that point working at DICE. And I remember that I was in a super slow moment in my career and something happened at work that I didn't like. And, you know, I felt like I was like, you know, swimming against the current and nobody understood and all that stuff. And I kind of kind of just went like, I kind of feel like people have to see the reality of being an animator from my perspective right now. Maybe other people yeah. feel this way as well, because I felt so horrible at that point in time without naming names or naming companies or the situation. Mm -hmm. Just this is what it is. It's not easy, right? Like it's not yeah. PG because it's easy to go peachy all the time. And I thought, I think this is going to be the end of my YouTube channel. I'm going to put it out there <laughs> and then people are going to watch this and I'm like, man, you're so full of rubbish. And then this is going to yeah. be the end. But I didn't have any more content. So I was like, I'm just going to put it out there, see what happens. And I remember, I think I didn't post a video for at least a week or two after because I was so nervous that I would kind of get found out or <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they had any more ideas. I was like horrible, but it did incredibly well. And people kind of relate yeah. to it until now when they find something in it. And like, I feel like going a little bit edgy sometimes and just mm -hmm. talking about something that is really like inherent and inside of you and is comes from a real place. People can see that and, 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 and it's just really powerful. That's what I found. And like, yeah. that's the thing that showed me most about YouTube. The thing that I love about most about YouTube is that like people can tell when you're real mm -hmm. and they gravitate towards that. Which yeah. Is great. Yeah. And chances are like, if you're interested about something, there's going to be other people that find it helpful or interesting too. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's like different people resonate with different people. That sounds like a basic statement, but it's true. Like, like you doing a tutorial as Mark Masters, it, but maybe it's re resonate with some people that maybe other people mm -hmm. like as somebody else is doing the same tutorial, right? Has a different yeah. cadence, different style, maybe they, so I think that's something for everybody. This is why I think that there's not enough animation channels yeah. out there and we need more. I agree. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's been like, I know you have 10 minutes left, Mark, and you have to actually kind of like go because you are a busy guy. So I actually want to thank you a lot for actually kind of like, you know, joining me in this interview. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it's been awesome. Here. It's been great. Thanks a lot, everybody in the chat asking questions. Yeah, if thank you. If you get to any of them, please join next time. Ask them again so we can ask, answer them. But uh, for now, Mark, you know, great to have you here man really yeah cool. thank you thank you for having me i'm glad we were finally able to to do this right it's exactly. been a long time coming yeah i know i know nearly a year but we did it we yeah did it. we did it <laughs> okay guys thank you very awesome. much Thanks thank you everybody for